time. This Jamaica Labour Party government has made a name for itself as the most corrupt administration in the history of Jamaica. There should have been someone different that don't vote. So they are not taking any side. And then now she is the speaker. There are so many things our husband doing out there and it's covering up. How is going to stop when his wife is the speaker? She's the one that gives the talk. Rubbish. So the cost of living abide the people and the taxes are suck out them blood. Hey, justice! Justice! We need justice! We need justice! Now, I hope you're all doing fine. Now, this is very sad to see uh, the situation in Jamaica. Now, so many Jamaicans are coming out to say enough is enough to this government. Now, the high corruption rates, the high crime rates, the high unemployment rates, please the government do something or call for an election. Please, please, we need a change and this is the time please work for us or get out. Now, this is a very moving video of the people of Jamaica crying out to the government to work for them or they should get out and other leaders be elected. So let's watch this video, come back and have a quick discussion about the same. Thank you so much. You know, which is ridiculous. I never asked for what I got and I have decided to keep only 20% of the increase. He is the one who has given me that pay increase, him. So how can he be complaining about the size of it? And as I said, in due course, he will be in my position and earning it. So he should be careful what he said. I watched an assault on democracy take place in our parliament. I ought not to have been surprised because this government is always in a fight with the Constitution. Indeed, the tendency manifested itself from Andrew Honus was leader of the opposition when he sought to utilize pre-signed, undated letters of resignation to remove two of his senators. Of course, as you all know, he was the first Prime Minister to consider placing a Chief Justice on probation, thereby revealing that he does not understand how our parliamentary system is established and a critical decision to have the separation of powers embedded in our parliamentary procedure and in our constitution. And I could go on and on. The leader of the party has already referenced the states of emergency and the way in which it, it has been abused by the government who has chosen to use it as a crime-fighting tool. But yesterday, yesterday, Section 96 one of the Constitution, this supreme law, this Constitution which when we are sworn into Parliament we all swear to uphold, that was not demonstrated in the Parliament. You see, under Section 96.1, the section which was amended yesterday, when the extension of the tenure of the DPP is being considered, the Governor General, on the recommendation of the Prime Minister, has to consult with the Leader of the Opposition. And it is after that consultation, which must be done before the DPP reaches the age of 60, after that consultation, the extension is granted. So historically, in 2020, the Director of Public Prosecutions turned 60. And quite appropriately, she applied for an extension. She applied for an extension of five years, and after the requisite consultation, an extension of three years was granted. Now, yesterday, the Minister of Justice, in a very scant address to the opening remark to the Parliament, explained to the country that this amendment was being brought to the Parliament because of an amendment to the Pensions Act of 2017. He tried to assume responsibility for this amendment, saying that it was intended really that the Minister, Ministry of Finance would do it, and seemed to have said that it was because of his diligence 
why he was bringing it to Parliament himself. But I say this. If you are the Minister of Justice, you have a greater responsibility than any other member of Parliament or member of Cabinet to lead by example in the way that you do matters, the way that you bring these matters to the Parliament. The opposition was not consulted on this matter. The opposition was not notified except prior, a few hours prior to the convening of Parliament. And in this way, the Minister of Justice and the government demonstrated a level of authoritarian arrogance which we have come to see as a part of their modernist operandi and a, ref and a reflection of how they see their role as against the people of this country. More and more you hear about mandatory sentencing, mandatory wills, mandatory DNA. And this government is determined to impose itself into every aspect of the life of these people. And that was manifested yesterday when they attempted to change the law to do a constitutional amendment without any consultation at all with the opposition. And let me tell you why it's so significant. The powers of the DPP are vast. The Director of Public Prosecutions can institute and undertake criminal proceedings against any person before any court other than a court-martial in respect of any offense against the law of Jamaica. The DPP can take over and continue any such criminal proceedings that may have been instituted by any other person or authority. And most significantly, the DPP can discontinue at any stage before judgment is delivered any such criminal proceedings instituted or undertaken by himself or any other person or authority. So these are the kinds of powers that a DPP has. And in the context, as the leader said, of events which we imagine are going to unfurl before the country, one has to wonder why the mat matter has been approached in this manner. You see, the Pensions Amendment Act was in 2017. The first application for an extension was in 2020. There was the opportunity to have implemented the requirements of the, the, of the Pensions Act. And we could have engaged in a discussion, the opposition and the government, and we could have then dealt with the extension to bring it in line to what was happening with other public officers. That was not done. 2017 to 2023 is six years. There has been no discussion about this extension. The Constitutional Reform Committee was established in March 2023 and has been very active meeting sometimes twice for the week, has been engaging persons, the citizenry, in a discussion on the road, hearing their views as to how the constitution should be reformed, what sort of constitution they would like to see in Jamaica. This was never put before the Constitutional Committee. So then, it is reasonable for one to ask, what is it that would lead the government to take a decision that at the very last sitting of the parliament, without any discussion with the opposition, without any consultation, without any discourse, without placing it before the Constitutional Reform Committee, why was it so urgent that it be done now? The Director of Public Prosecutions is expected to demit office on September 20, 2023, which is when the three years will come to an end. Is that why? 
is this a specific action on the part of the government to ensure that the director of public prosecution remains in place? And if so, what must the country interpret this as being? Because surely, surely there must be competent attorneys in the office. Surely, the assurance which was given in 2020 by the government that a succession plan would have been put in place, they must have kept their word. So what is the urgency why this matter has been brought to the parliament at this stage and in this manner? Let me be clear, the opposition would have welcomed an opportunity to have discussed the matter with the government. We believe and we hope uphold the tenets of good governance. Our desire is to always ensure that the public retain and maintain of a comfort and confidence in certain offices, significant and important offices in this country. And we would have liked to have participated in an analysis. Say, for example, we could have advanced the view that these offices should now have fixed terms, that that is the way in which the world was moving. We could have said that, yes, there we have no objection. And imagine what the country would have seen if the government and the opposition had gone to the parliament with a united view. You know, Minister Chuck said in an interview on which I was on this morning. Hello, everyone. Now, it is high time we, as the people, we, as the the voters realize that we have been having a poor test of leaders. Now, the leadership that exists in our country has been fueled at a time by us. We once went into the ballot and voted these leaders that we all complain about. Now, sometimes we know we can think we are electing the best, but out of the best we are electing, we just get, we just had the poorest test ever. Now, these has always been the case when the government fails or when the government does not deliver to the people's expectations. Now, we always, we all know that when these governments, when they were once campaigners, when they were once on the campaign trail, they all gave these promises that made us think these countries, these our countries are going to be heavens. But once they ascended to power everything changed now they started prioritizing their own families their own people now this is what I, whatever makes some people now to rebel now we have so many people in jamaica who are now rebelling against the government now it's not about uh where you belong or the party now there is this one say everyone is hit by the rain with the same intensity unless you are brainwashed to think that the rain is only showering you now this means when the economy is so hard everyone everyone feels it even if you belong to the opposition or the government side you feel it because you are going to buy you are going at the fuel pump to buy it at the same price as the one on the opposition side you are going to uh, maybe pay the same tax as the one on the opposition tax it doesn't there's no tax for those people aligning with the government or those people aligning with the opposition now we have seen so many leaders coming out to say how it is so hard to live in jamaica how it is so hard to make a living in jamaica because the high taxation because there is insecurity because there is high unemployment rates which has led so many youths into engaging into so many crimes just to earn a living now it is just in order when the government keeps its promises and this i mean when the government promised to deliver and create jobs for the youths or for the people of jamaica and it does exactly that it is good and in order when the government tries not to change its its promises when it's 
it doesn't change the priority priorities it had once when being elected by the people it is good when the government keeps intact with the people and it is good when the government is so transparent to the people now what happens when the government tries not to be transparent to the people uh, acting opaque with the people's taxes now when this happens now the people become so sensitive and all that lingers in their minds is the misuse of those hard and taxes that they pay and this leads the people to rebel and we are now seeing a huge number of jamaicans rebelling because of whatever has happened in jamaica we have seen some leaders in the government who cannot even now be accountable to their ministries when asked about these questions they go so wrong uh, or on televisions or on radios or in the parliament because they can't even keep track of whatever they say they can't keep track of whatever they are delivering now we have seen the corruption rates in most black countries and this includes jamaica it's not only jamaica it happens in my country kenya it happens all over black countries that i mean africa and the caribbean now it is high time as the people make good taste of our leaders let's not elect people because of their faces because they are good looking let's not elect people because they say they came from poor background that does not change how they feel about you we have seen so many people who call themselves those names that people might like to hear like hustlers I, ca I came from a poor background so please elect me I know your problems and they have ended up messing the people completely because they are now doing whatever the people didn't expect they are now working for the US and all these countries they are now puppets let's please elect people let's elect our leaders with much wisdom thank you so much for watching this video please please if you find it so informative please consider subscribing one love jamaica please make good choices of your leaders we are trying to make good choices here in africa thank you so much please see you in our next episode